Good evening to everyone, and thank you for again for joining us this evening for our talk here today. My name is Abraham Ignacio, Jr. I'm the librarian for the Filipino American Center here at the San Francisco Public Library. Actually, we're, we're the only Filipino American Center in any uh, public library system. So that this was really the um, power of the Filipino community in the 90, mid-90s who were able to struggle with to get organized and, and to um, advocate on on our community's behalf to have a Filipino center at this library and also to have a Filipino American librarian who would be, you know, um, tasked with creating materials, collecting materials and developing the uh, the book lists that people would be reading about the Philippines, the Filipino American experience and stuff. So I'm very honored to have taken the third Filipino American Center librarian uh, position, the third person to be, to be called the Filipino American Center librarian. So this evening, we're having a talk here today with uh, Hannah Usman, author of Jalal and the Lake, and her publisher, uh, the great Christina Newhart with Sorry Sorry Storybook. So, hey, I think we're in for a great evening to kind of get into little bit of uh, how it all happened and and where people came from to get to where they were whether as a publisher as an author so first off I'd like to start off with our um, our um, oops ah here it is sorry our SFPL land acknowledgments it's a very important that we acknowledge the First Nation peoples of whose land that we um, are uh, living and working in through and stuff. So let me start. The San Francisco Public Library acknowledges that we occupy the unceded ancestral homeland of the Ramaytush Ohlone peoples, who are the original inhabitants of the San Francisco Peninsula. We recognize that we benefit from living and working on their traditional homeland. As uninvited guests, we affirm their sovereign rights as the, as first peoples and wish to pay our respects to the ancestors elders and the relatives of the Ramaytush community with that said uh, i'd like to introduce our two distinguished guests and uh, author and publisher today uh, hannah usman is a muslim filipino lawyer who grew up in marawi city lanao del sur she earned her BA in English at Mindanao State University, University Marawi, and her JD degree from Jose Maria College of Law, Davao City. As a proud Maranao, she wants to share the richness of her culture and tradition through fiction. Peace and environmental awareness are her advo advocacies, which she believes are rooted in understanding culture and tradition. She loves Korean reality shows, coffee shop hopping, oat milk lattes, noodles, ice cream, visiting museums, and reading. Jalal and the Lake is her first book. Christina Newhart is a designer, writer, and publisher. Her fascination with books began when she was five years old. Born in Manila to a Tagalog mother and American father, she moved to the United States at the age of 10, but always holds the Philippines in her heart. A love for text, image, and story moved her to pursue a career in graphic design. And asking the question, how can design strengthen Filipino culture in a meaningful way? Her children's press, Sorry Sorry Storybooks, was born. The press has published five bilingual titles in Ivatan, Cebuano, Chavacano, Orai and Maranao, and received positive coverage from the Nerds of Color, the Seattle Review of Books, Smart Parroting Philippines, the Aswang Project, the Philam, the Inquirer, and Asia Pacific Forum on WBAI Radio. A former New Yorker, Christina now lives in Oakland with a, a tiny vocal cat named Princess Genghis. Gen yeah, Genghis. She is most home she is most at home in a city by the water. I welcome both of you to our talk today. Hey, um, to you, Christina. Thank you. 
Thank you, Abe. Thank you for the introduction. Um, and thank you to SFPL for having us and to Pawa for um, co sponsoring the event today. Um, I'm really excited to be here. Um, I think we're doing a, a discussion format and we can, Hannah and I can just speak to each other. I think Abe has some questions for us, but actually um, Hannah is up for reading the story. So I thought, um, would everyone like to hear Hannah read Jalal, the story? Since we have the author here. Yes. Um, okay, awesome. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah, Hannah, I know you've got um, allergies, so, or asthma, so just let me, let us know if that's, you know, how you're doing, but yeah. Okay. Hello, everyone. I'll share screen. It's uh, good morning from the Philippines. Right. On the island of Mindanao, on the shores of a great lake, was a small village. The lake was very important to the people of the village. The lake gave them bongkaong, tumaginting, and other fresh fish. It, fell, it filled the rice fields and gave them clean water to drink and bathe in. Every Friday, the people celebrated the lake's bounty with a feast called kanduri. Everyone enjoyed Friday kanduri except Jalal, the only son of Sultan Abdul. He didn't think about the great lake, the fish, the rice fields, or kanduri. All he could think about were the puffy cloud in the sky. He wanted to own them. He told himself, it would be very nice to sleep on those kabun. One day, strange men came to the village. They wore black suits, different from the colorful regalia and malo that the villagers wore. One stranger said to the villagers, We can make your wishes come true, but on one condition. That is, said the second stranger, If you allow us to throw garbage into your lake, we fill all the dumps in our city. Hearing this, Jalal hurried to his father with their proposal and wish. Ama, I want those white clouds. Sultan Abdul wanted his only son to be happy. He agreed to the stranger's request and Jalal's wish was granted. Jalal was so excited when he received his fluffy clouds. He jumped on them, skated on them, and knocked on them. He shaped them into pillows, palaces, robots, skateboards, and crocodiles. Anything Jalal wanted, he could shift from his clouds. Every week, the strangers would throw their garbage in the lake because Jalal kept wishing for more clouds. Jalal did not realize that the lake was now polluted. The Sultan's brother said, Kaka Abdul, the water from the lake has turned marsi. The fishers barely catch tilapia and bungkaong. It hasn't rained in weeks, so the rice fields are dry. Why? The people have no more clean water to drink nor food to eat, said the elders. Children are getting sick. We wish our lake was clean again. Alarmed, the Sultan went to Jalal's room, filled with clouds. Jalal watakulay, you cannot keep wishing for clouds. Why, Ama? If you keep wishing for clouds, the strangers will keep on using the lake as their dump. There will be no more food to eat nor water to drink. But Ama, I want the gabon. Jalal, when you become a sultan, you do not only think of your own wishes. You need to consider other people. Realizing his mistake, Jalal felt sad. He lay awake all night thinking about what to do. The next morning, Jalal opened his windows, gathered all the clouds, and blew them up to the sky. He and his father announced a plan to clean up the lake, and the people agreed to help. The men used their awang, went to the lake, and used fish nets to collect the garbage. Then, they dug compost pits for food and plant scraps. The women collected the trash along the shore and planted water plants to clean the lake. The children picked out plastic bottles and metals for recycling. The puffy clouds then rained on the village and the rice fields were naturally watered. The lake has returned to its beauty, the people cheered. 
From then on, everyone enjoyed every kanduri. The fishers were happy to catch fresh fish and the farmers to harvest fresh food. The people, people were clean and colorful regalia and malo. Jalal and other children swam in the lake, which Jalal now understood the importance of. The lake was the source of his people's happiness. Jalal and the lake. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, so that's it for the story. Um, I just wanted to share a story of when I share this with classrooms and I've been visiting schools, the when I asked like what kids would shape the clouds into, they can talk for a really long time. Um, they were really captivated by that that piece, Hannah, like they have lots to say about all the things they would make out of their clouds. Um, Abe, did you want to ask questions or should I like, I can, I can just ask Hannah, like, how did you think of the story, you know, and um, I can share a little about, I, I put out a contest for Sorry Sorry story books for a Maranao story and Hannah was the winner of that contest. But um, oh. what, what inspired you to, to create the story, Hannah? There are so many uh, things that really inspired me to write this. One is, um, I like what I said, I grew up in Marawi and it's near the Lake Reno you know, and I, one of my like, really aspiration is like how to encourage the younger ones to clean the environment. And we know that Lake Lanao is really the source of food. Uh, and not only food, but because um, Lake Lanao is also the one that's powering the hydroelectric um, supply in the whole of Lanao, those were of our province and the nearby province. In what else? Because I'm a tita of four. I'm really <laughs> proud of this. And I love children. So yeah, I love telling stories to them. And um, the thing is, I was challenged to like, how about tell them a story that within the context of the Maranao people, like, you know, my pamangkins are so into Peppa Pig um, and everything they see uh, on YouTube because uh, uh. everyone can access YouTube. So uh, I was challenged so to like create a story that, somehow would um, reconnect them because um, the most of my pamankins are not living in um, Marawi City. And uh, this is a sad um, fact that even them that don't know how to really speak uh, Maranao, our language. Mm. So I thought of, you know, telling them our story, our roots. And it's something that they should be proud of. And mm. like they can look like they have something to look forward to when whenever they visit Marawi. Hmm. Oh. Hmm. and kids are I don't know kids are like really responding to the story right like I've, I've seen some posts online and yeah. mm -hmm. and you know uh, yeah this one every time we go home from Jensen to Marawi City so it's an 8 hour um land travel car mm. so um upon approaching Lanao we would um pass by Lake Lanao. So like the view of Lake Lanao is really there. And then they would shout Jalal, Jalal, where are you? We're here. <laughs> That's cute. And like they thought that Jalal is like living there and they would just shout and Jalal, where are you? We're here. We're coming home. So yeah. That's really sweet. Yeah, no. Oh, um, Han Hannah, I just wanted to ask, so are, are there some real, um, echo, Lake Lanao, is there, or just in your the area in general, besides, uh, are there real environmental, uh, serious environmental issues happening with the lake right now that need to be addressed? 
Uh, yes, so uh, I was um, last time when I had the launching of this book also uh, mm. in Marawi City, I talked to the dean of the College of Fisheries of mm. the Mindanao State University in Marawi. And I was told that uh, they were conducting a study of the um of the water in Lake Lanao and also Lake in Lake the powders also another lake um in Lanao. And they mm. were saying that um it's 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 not really yet alarming on that uh, alarming level, but right now there should be um strict um uh, policies that should be done within the premises of Lake Lanao because one, Lake Lanao is a protected environmental area. Mm. However, there are actually private resorts um built. Um, in some of the municipalities uh, surrounding, I mean, like, like uh, because the Lake Lanao, the sur there are many municipalities mm -hmm. surrounding the Lake Lanao. So, yeah, I was told that um, they're already conducting studies because um, even the 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 fish, mm -hmm. some fish are no longer available, are becoming in instinct. Yeah. Oh wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I, I cannot remember who, but um, I remember somebody posting Jalal and talking about it and speaking about it, um, what their parents had told them about Lake Lanao from an earlier time and that there are a lot of fish where it, it just isn't the same as oh, when they're oh. growing up. And I think aside from that, um, it's people um, right now, our... Um, we are paying the highest amount for our electricity supply. And it's ironic that the Lake Lanao is with us, and yet we don't get that um, enough supply of electricity. And we're also paying the highest amount. So yeah, these are the things that I wish people can, um, you know, these are they always say that this is the white elephant, but it's not supposed to be white elephant because people should be aware of this, mm. should be talking about this, uh, because Lake Lano is ours. I mean, the Marano should really take care of it and not just be proud of it. Mm -hmm. They should be doing something about the lake itself. Mm -hmm. oh, just to follow up, is is there a strong environmental movement in 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 that part of your country? I mean, in in the Lake Lanao area. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, yeah, unfortunately, no. Oh. Yeah, uh, it's the solid uh, solid waste management issues is really problematic, mm. and this is uh what. My, me and my friends in the creative industry were trying to say that maybe we can use um this in addressing this kind uh this issue uh, how to raise awareness mm. because we feel like the community has a sense of like entitlement that um they always say that that it's okay it's just it's just gonna be there the Lana will be forever there mm. but that should not be the case yeah unfortunately there's no really strong environmental issue yeah and there 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 have been um cases of flooding in some of the municipalities around the Lanao uh when it that's unusual that's actually unusual mm. yeah so i don't know why why some people are not really like the community is not really into this issue but maybe there's a missing link between the understanding, their understanding of the environment and maybe their lifestyle. Yeah, that's that's what we want to uh, address. And in my case, that's the reason why I, my that's the reason why Jalal, I think, would be one of, I hope that this could be one of the ways to, to influence the younger generation, yeah, even the younger generation to talk about these things, especially the Lake Lanao. 
I'm thinking of your visit to the Raya School in Manila, Hannah, um, for everyone yeah. else on the call. Um, Hannah did a reading uh, with three classes at the Progressive School Raya in Manila and was sharing Jalal. And when, when you got to the part about, and then the strangers said, only if you let us throw garbage in the lake, all the kids went, <gasps> <laughs> so they know at that age and they, they respond for sure. They, it's um, unfathomable to kids that you would choose to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, um, Mila has a question. We were. Oh yeah, go ahead. Want to ask? Like, you know, we... go ahead, Mila. Oh, we. Um, you're on. Oh, here we go. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Hannah, thank you so much. Um. For for that information, um, it's so. I mean, it our discussion about the environment and just underscores the importance of what you did in terms of doing a, a children's story, because you're starting to this educational process at a very young age, and um, just from your um, I think nieces or nephews, they you can already see the reaction um, in terms of being able to relate to the content of your story mm -hmm. and uh, start to understand the importance of protecting the environment that way. So that's one. And second, I wanted to ask um, how the local government is undertaking this educational process uh, for people to appreciate and protect the environment. Because I remember years ago, years and years ago when we went to Palawan, I, I could see the consciousness of people there. Well, tourism is one of their sources of income, right? So even the guide who was um, taking us around was so conscious in picking up anything that she sees on the beach, uh, on the water. Um, there, there's, I was really impressed by that kind of consciousness. And I was wondering how your local government is undertaking this um, this very important issue in terms, you know, even just vis-a-vis -vis, uh, Lake Lanao, which is so important uh, to the to the community. So, is there some some efforts that they're doing? As uh, as far as I can remember, there's yet no um, like significant uh, movement to really talk about solid solid waste management. In fact, um, this has been really an issue. Who in within the community and even those people like me uh, who are not now uh, living in Marawi, but whenever we come back, the the presence of solid waste um, solid waste is really uh, visible, mm -hmm. and that's um uh, that's what we're trying to really um uh, create, and we're trying to empower uh, our friends, uh, those active uh, young ones in Marawi City, or uh, we're trying to look at the um at um, submitting like um for in in uh, policies how we can convince our um local uh local policymakers to do something about it. Yeah. But as of now, we it's it's really sad to say this, but um we're I can say we're somehow failing at solid waste uh management right now. So that's why um I'm also thankful that I have um close friends. That have the same um, we Sentiment. talk about the same concern about this. Yeah, mm. yeah, and yeah. The thing is, um, one thing is, we want to tell people that our religion is Islam because Marawi is a Muslim dominated city in the Philippines. Mm. So we wanted to tell people that we are ambassadors of our faith. Mm -hmm. But then how can we say that if our community doesn't show that way? So I feel like there is a, there is um somehow a corrupted um part of how the people appreciate our religion, our faith mm -hmm. in translating it into action. So this is what how this is one of the things that we want to challenge also with our with our religious leaders now. Mm -hmm. Um I wish the we wish sometimes the lectures would be holistic. Mm. 
just yeah if it i don't know if you're if you if you if you've heard this um sometimes they post uh this in like restaurants and buildings well, like um cleanliness is next to godliness right. and that is really true in islam teachings that uh that is really true because uh in fact we were we are told to do our ablution or our uh, the way we wash mm. um five times a day before we pray but and yet why is our community suffering from this and people don't see the connection of the flooding um from this solid waste mismanagement and i also have friends who uh, i also have um some no this is not official although this is not official reports but i i i i've been hearing stories that um the our local government have budget for the disaster risk reduction and yet we cannot feel those changes uh within our uh city mm. yeah so the most that we can do now is like um do it uh within our small group mm. to somehow increase awareness that there must be done and in fact one of my friends who went to a program in uh, us um he recently went back to the philippines he brought the issue of um uh, somehow related to lake Lanao, the supply of the electricity that is really mm. um yeah, so it's somehow you know somehow the talk uh, the talk about um when we talk about like you now environment it also becomes political in our case. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, could I ask? Um, could you share a little bit about what drew you in the first place to um, environmental advocacy? Because I know prior to writing Jalal, you that was something that really spoke to you. Um, but yeah, if you could say a little bit about that, and then also, um, do you feel like your your legal background informs like how you think as a writer, like whichever one of those you want to answer? <laughs> uh, okay, so yeah, uh, when I was in during my younger younger days. Um, when I was in college, we, I was part of a social uh, civic um group. So what we do is uh, still the same. We like empower and then we join tree planting trees. Um, but mm. along the way, I realized that some of these activities are not sustainable. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So there must be something that should be done. There should be a change. And also when I was um in law school. There, we studied many environmental laws, and that also made me realize that the laws are so ideal. Uh, like it really answers the the current issues, and yet, why are we here? In fact, actually, when I was in law school, there were some days that I contemplated if if this laws still matter. In fact, I almost dropped out of. <clears throat> sorry, of law school because I felt like there was a disparity between law school and what is real. I mean, I mean the mm -hmm. Philippine laws and mm -hmm. uh yeah, but that was me being an activist or having an activist mind or mm -hmm. having an idealistic mind. So yeah, but yeah, for me the, the uh, with the with the issue of the environmental issue solid waste management in Marawi, for me the best approach for that is to understand. Uh, to have um to have a better understanding of the teachings of Islam mm. and then also raise awareness of the Philippine laws for example there for example I can I can really say that this is one of my challenges at my age whenever I go out of the country you can see the trash bins like in like maybe more than five and then I would really have to think which which um trash bin at um I mean like if I have a plastic bottle because they require you to throw the cup and the bottle to a, to diff, to different bins. But in the Philippines, we only have I don't, I'm sorry, and I, I, maybe I'm not talking you know, on behalf of the whole Philippines, but like generally I grew up just learning the nine biodegradable and biodegradable. And these are the things that's that's really difficult to understand. At, I'm at, at my age, huh? so I wish these simple things are taught at the early age of the kids. I mean, of the mm -hmm. of a learner. So for for others, these are basic, but it may not be basic for some. So what what should be done? Maybe also also I'm also working in 
uh, state university. So for me, the the universities have really big roles mm -hmm. in yeah in doing these works. Yeah. I um had another question or maybe it's a comment, but I I don't know if everyone sorry, and my cat has now joined the call. Um <laughs> so I hear her. Um, but uh the the name Maranao, Maranao is Hannah, could you explain the the core of that? The Maranao. Yeah. So Maranao, Ranao is the Lake Lanao. So Maranao, Maranao are the people of the lake. Mm. So yeah, the Maranaos refer to the language and also the people of the league. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's one of the 13 uh Muslim groups in the Philippines. I, I wish I'd <laughs> I think it's 13. Yeah, 13 groups. Yeah. And, uh, um and I just wanted to share, I don't know if other Phil M's might relate, but I, I was late in life before I realized so my, my family is Tagalog, right? Like but Tagalog is Tagailog, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's from, from um, the river. Yes. And that kind of blew my mind to realize like many Philippine names are in relation to nature. Pidnon, mm -hmm. um, right? people of the current. And so anyway, I just wanted to share if others may also have their minds blown that um mm -hmm. how how you know, even in how we call ourselves, it's nature is at the center. So mm -hmm. to talking about Hannah like how do we how do we reconnect to that and I mean Tagalogs don't as an identity we I don't think we think of the river and it's not a clean river in Manila so yeah oh Hannah I just wanted to check so solid waste is it an issue of of things having um waste big waste disposal dumps like smoky mountain in 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 manila and stuff that it's there's just a big dumping ground of all the waste from the wherever the surrounding areas it's centralized and then also you were mentioning something about planting trees so is there a major issue of of deforestation which causes you know flooding around the areas and stuff that's related also Oh, yeah. Actually, we um so the Marawi city has uh, our city has a separate landfill, but mm. because most people live around the lake, mm. most likely they use the lake as like you know some so even some of them do their thing in I mean in the lake. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And. Um, I think that's also an issue because um, the landfill now in the city, the one, the previous one, the owner of the land is like trying to get the land. So, and then they opened the new one uh, saying that it would address the solid waste management. But um, I think these are band-aid solutions. Yeah. Yeah, it should really start mm -hmm. with the lifestyle of the people. But the question is how? So maybe... Mm -hmm. Yeah, it should really start at the barangay level and then going down to the like within the families. Yeah, and then what was that again? The issue, yeah, illegal logging is also one of the oh, illegal logging, uh, yeah, mm. major issues in um the whole province of Lanao Sur. Mm. In fact, in in Maria Cristina Falls, <laughs> Maria Cristina Falls. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure if you're familiar with it. That's in Iligan City. That's like an hour city from uh, Marawi City. So, um, how do I explain this? Okay, so there's a there's a municipality in Lanao Sur, um, which is Bumbaran. Uh, that's like an old uh this uh old municipality in Lanao Sur, and if you the the illegal logging is really visible. Mm. And even in other municipalities, because Lano Sur Supply is one of the best um uh what uh, uh furnitures oh. actually. 
Yeah, and that's that's actually noted. Uh, that's actually recorded, and most of them are illegally done, and that's why there there are floodings in Lanosur. That's like I said, it's unusual. Yeah. So I don't know. I I, I don't know if this alarms the people. Especially the policymakers, which they, they should alarm them. Mm -hmm. And even the there are already changes in the like the the climate. It's usually really cold in Marawi uh mm -hmm. during like in February, but yeah, there the the climate is erratic, it's really changing. Yeah. It's not the usual anymore. Yeah. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I had a question for Hannah about um literary influences. So are there writers that you just really fangirl over or who shaped how you write? Um, um I don't have uh, really one in particular, but um I like the way uh Aren't that their way? Mm. The yeah, uh, kind of small things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like how she uh, uh she tells her story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. If folks would like to ask questions, um, yeah, you know, feel free. Time. Yeah, please join in. Comments or questions? Or chat. We could read it out, or can yeah, or <laughs> yeah, or you know, please, you know, we're we're all kind of in a a circle here, a virtual yeah. circle, so we virtual can circle. Oh, share share stories or comments. Oh, Tracy's asking, can you tell us or show us more about the illustrations? Oh, okay. um, yeah, oh, so we didn't even um, mention, so the illustrations are done by uh, Marianne Polita. She's an illustrator based in Quezon City. Um, I had um, been looking and looking and looking for an illustrator. I was hoping to find one from Mindanao, um, really wanted to find a Maranao uh, illustrator. And there's some very talented people, but it didn't just didn't match Hannah's story. Um, uh. I was following a few different people online and there you go. I just you, you saw her style. I'll share my screen again if you want to. Um, I'll just share to. Yeah, one second. Um, but her yeah her work really I thought it was a great fit and it reminded me of um, she loves anime. She just has a very strong visual voice. Uh -huh. and, yeah, and I thought, I thought it would be a great fit. Um, I showed it to Hannah also, and Hannah you liked it too, and. Thought it would be something that um, kids would relate to, and they do. They love them. Uh -huh. um, just show they really are just just beautiful and whimsical. Like uh -huh. I love these, and the story is very fantastic. Yeah, I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, mm. can I this one? Can you stay with this illustration? Yeah, yeah. Mm. This one is one of my favorite um, pages because it really shows the. Yeah, like the usual Marano gathering set up, like how we prepare the food. And even the, the Mamandiang on your left upper side, that's, we call that Mamandiang. Mm. And we really put it up during big celebrations. Mm. And yeah, the actually the this one, the food preparation also, that's how we prepare it. We we prepare it in uh brass um as something made of brass and we call it tabak tabak yeah so this is really one of my favorite because it really captured the usual setup uh, mm. in, in a kanduri or in a face and Jala looks very bored with this amazing piece <laughs> yeah yeah he, <laughs> want, he wants his clouds he just cares about the clouds that's it but Hannah is I didn't um chicken right is 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 that that is something that is um, uh, often at Marano feasts, right? 
Oh, you mean this one? Yeah. This yeah. One. Most, most, yeah. This in Lanao when we have, uh, we call it enthronement <laughs> because it's still some, some families um practice the uh, enthronement ceremonies when they get a title. So mm -hmm. like they, uh, like Sulutan or Ba'i, like that. So we have a really big gathering that everyone is wearing the best of their malongs and like traditional clothes. Mm. Yeah. So we usually have this. And all the sweets, <laughs> like the one in front of um Jalal, the plate, I can see that that's um Bruwa. <laughs> it's a <laughs> that's how it's shaped, Bruwa. And yeah. And mostly it's yellow. Uh -huh. Yeah. Is, oh, is there a like, symbolism behind the, the yellow? Um, yeah, of... for royalty. <laughs> ah, royalty. I got it. Royalty, yeah. yeah, yeah. Got it. Okay. Oh, Mila, are you asking a question? I think you're on mute. Oh, let me... And then I see Justine, you have your hand raised also. So just um, Mila, could you unmute? And then Justine, if you have a question after her. Oh, you're the, still you're still muted. Mila. Mila. It's the um, it's a button on the bottom left, I think. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. I just have a Hannah. Um, how are you um sharing your book with the other communities? Um, since this is such such an important um, uh, it has a very important message in terms of uh the environment and and the role, you know. So how 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 are you uh, are you doing um like a tour uh, a book tour? Oh yeah, right now uh, there's no scheduled book tour. Uh, but I uh, get also invitations in um Marawi City. So um uh recently, you no, know, how recent is that? It's not recent, but just uh in February, I guess I was invited to um to share the story with uh, some kids in a sort of playroom. It's like a private um. So a shop, so like their yeah, like a daycare. Uh, but I talked to some of uh, my um networks. Uh, like they want to do other uh, extension programs. Um, mm -hmm. in yeah, the ones working in the university in MSU, like they want to do their um education uh extension programs using uh this book. And also recently, this was um shared uh thank you christina for the books to a uh the mcu gens and the campus here in general santa city uh also has uh an adopted uh school it's mm -hmm. a great school elementary school they used uh this book for their extension program so most of the invitations now and also um the invitations that i receive is uh coming from uh from the university mm. in both in Marawi and also in General Santos. Uh, General Santos City also have um, some population who are uh, Muslims and also IT. So we also share this book to them. Um, but uh, right now, one uh, I'm we're trying to plan a um, series of uh, story uh, story reading. In Marawi in in Lano Sur, but yeah, uh, we're still planning with a friend. Uh, my friend is the owner of uh Arites. Arites is uh uh is was also a project by a friend who showcases uh Maranao craft. So we wanted to partner uh into a big project like bringing Jalal and also the craft of Maranao into the communities. Oh wow, that that's yeah. amazing. You're wearing I know the whole thing. Yeah. That's the wait, your jacket, right, Hannah? Is from yeah, this one. <laughs> this one is from Arete. So it's a customized land up uh, blazer. I don't know. Yeah, blanket blazer. Yeah. We did nice. do 
in October, we had like a small, a small book tour. We did um, launches in oh, yeah. Santos, Manila and Davao. And then we also did a visit um, to Quezon City at the Raya School. Mm -hmm. um, and and that's been it. And then uh, events that I'm, I'm repping here, um, like we, we did a San Francisco launch, an Oakland launch. Um, mm -hmm. Nice. Like that. But it would be wonderful to do more and, and connect it more directly to um, communities and not know for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for that. Justine, did you have a question? I don't know if you were weaving or. <laughs> <laughs> I was just waving hi. Um, thank you so much, Hannah and Christina. This is an amazing, beautiful book and story. I really enjoyed it. Um, I was going to ask about what the plans are or what's going on with the schools, specifically the elementary schools and how you're managing to do that. But I think that you sort of addressed it already with what you just said before. So if you have any more um, related to the elementary schools that you want to add, that would be great. Otherwise, it's good. But I am curious about uh, the Miranao portion of the story. Did you write it? Is that part of your um, your authorship, or was this was there another um, I guess person involved in the translation? And if so, how how was that? If there was the translation used here in the book is made by uh, Professor Sir Haila Latif, uh, also a professor in Mindanao State University, Marawi. Uh, but uh, I actually made also a version of the translation. Yeah, but I think Christina can further elaborate in the translation. Um, so, so yes, um, like that, and Hannah had, um, I think, reviewed um, Professor Soar's uh, translation. Um, and yeah, we, we did a little bit of back and forth. Um, I don't read Maranao, um, so I, I couldn't like edit it per se, but um, but yes, that's that's the story. <laughs> and I should say Justine is a fellow uh, Philam publisher and also um, in the Noan, so mm. he also publishes um, Philippine stories and Filipino American stories. Yay! <laughs> no, I was asking about that, Christina, because as you know, our books also have uh, Binukid translations. And because I don't also speak the language, there is a certain level of I'm going to just trust that this is accurate and right because you are translating it and you're an expert at it. So that's why I was curious about that that process. Yeah. yeah, it's usually best to have at least one other person review given given that. Um, so yes, Anna um, did see the text. Right. And for just uh, not asking this exactly, but the um, Another story, um, Sandanga, that was the Warai story, that, that one's a little different and that the author wrote that one in Warai and the translators then translated into English. Um, so in, in that sense, I you know was not, I knew a lot of eyes were looking at the Warai version and the English one I could read, so. I will stop sharing the illustrations. Um, They're beautiful. They are really beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Just makes such a... Yeah, and I... Um, just to talk a little bit about um, Sorry Sorry Storybooks, um, I look for a very different style for each book. Um, I don't want any one book to look like the others, you know, in terms of the illustrators co-creating along with the author. Mm -hmm. uh, like Hannah, you have a unique voice when you write, and I I want every illustrator to um, kind of lean into what makes them different. So that's sort of the thinking and and who gets chosen and 
um, you know, with Marianne, like she likes Studio Ghibli, like really lean into it, like Studio Ghibli, but make it Marana, you know? <laughs> so that was the assignment. She she read the assignment. <laughs> um, but yeah, and it's important also to to choose a style that children are going to relate to. Um, right, exactly. Beautiful art. I think that's sort of the, you know, in the craft of making children's picture books. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of amazing artists out there, but um, to make something that kids are going to want to pick up and hold and it, that it's colorful and there's characters with expressions that they they really like, you know. Um, I really love, uh, maybe I'll screen share again, but I, I love... I, I think we were wondering, like, how is she going to tackle the men in suits? You know, uh, exactly how is she going to represent that? And um, I thought she did a great job. Mm -hmm. Didn't yeah. expect her to make them this kind of green wash, but mm -hmm. you no, know, they're the bad guys. Without you, you yeah. could not even have the text here, right? And yeah. you, you know that they're trouble. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. yeah. So it was it was a great collaboration between the artists and Hannah and yourself, right, um, Christina? Yeah. In terms of getting was, the accurate the, portrayal of mm -hmm. uh, of the characters in Hannah's book. I would assume mm -hmm. that because Hannah was pointing earlier about the detail on the Hannah. What was that? Uh, that little curtain. I'm not sure what it's. That, the um, momentum. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so that's very that perfect. <laughs> yeah. And the point of view, mm -hmm. uh you Marion was able to like do that. Uh, it's so, amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you working so, on anything now, Hannah? Like any next, next yeah, my next question. Next books. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, this time I want a female character. Mm. Oh, that'd yeah. be nice. That'd be nice. Yeah. yeah. How are yeah, you? Can able... I... Sorry? Oh, go ahead, go ahead. And then I'll ask my question. I, it's, uh, I'm trying to make a story of... Uh, uh, we we have this character in Darangan. We, uh, it's not in Darangan. It's a Maranao story, the Ting Ting Abulawan, uh, meaning um, ting, gold, ting Ting, Golden Ting Ting. Uh, ting Ting is like a rapper to a girl mm -hmm. who's petit. Yeah. Oh, okay. Bulawan. It's fun. The story would be that she's not a Bulawan. She's not a gold. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I'm trying to make a story of it. I actually have one already, but oh, trying to uh, no. that would yeah. be great. That'd be great. Yeah. I was I was curious actually a little bit about um the Maranao. There's um a, a, like a oral a strong like oral literary tradition. No, and does that affect? So I mean, you sort of answered it, but does that affect like how you um think as a writer or um how you do you want to um, write in relation to that or speak to that tradition? And, you know, did you grow up with like folk tales? Is it, do people still tell stories orally? Is that still strong since, you know, yes. the Rangan is so famous? Yeah. And such a actually, uh, no. yeah. actually, we have a really rich, um, um, you know, stories, folk tales. But the problem with the uh, Marano is we don't have. Uh, like the written, mm, yeah, yeah. Like all this, yeah. Even even our language. So even even uh, that yeah. Actually, that's one of the challenges. Um, Christina, right? That, mm -hmm. um, we have problems of uh, translating Rana words because like we have shua sound, but we don't know how to put it in writing. Like, is it e or u or use just use apostrophe? And even now, actually, Christina, this is the first time I'm sharing to you that I still receive criticism on the translation. Like, oh, you shouldn't have used the E, you shouldn't have used the you like that. So like, yeah, it's really, it's re it's gonna be really full of criticism into the translation because we don't have a written, what do you call that? Um uh, or standardized. Yeah. Mm -hmm. standardized, yeah. So that's a challenge. But yeah. as of now, we're saying that as long as our message is conveyed, then I think we're good. Mm -hmm. Uh yeah, and it's it's really a challenge to our Marano linguists, um, like our mm -hmm. scholars in language. So that 
that this one also should really challenge our scholars in the university to to address this because um sayang i mean it's going to be a waste um there's there's so many stories um nice stories that mm. can be put in uh, writing but uh how do we start when do we start who should start it so there's mm. so many questions and like mm. i grew up listening to nice um really nice stories from my father uh when we were young kids yeah because my father so i i i have a rich um uh what they call this uh list of stories because my my father grew up in the other side of the lake and my mother also grew up from the other side of the lake so sometimes there are even variations in their um stories mm -hmm. and like that's something that's really nice to like something to study or be subject of research also in yeah. the study of language and even even the names of um the names of every like barrio barangay there's a story behind that mm. yeah mm -hmm. so i wish there could be some movement also from uh from the language majors of uh the universities mm. to work on this because it's really uh, it's gonna be a really a waste and i've i've heard many different characters um from from the stories of my father and mother and mm. yeah i wish i could put them also into writing that's why right now i feel like oh i'm taking the challenge now even if it's one one step at a time, even if it's yeah. really difficult also. Because yeah, and right now that sometimes I have to really think, um, because sometimes I write um I write very legal uh, document mm. and then I have to shift into a uh, not so legal um <laughs> doc, uh, something. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. But I I find I find it fun and also challenging. Wow. That's like such a, a great point. Um, that's something that's come up actually in um, creating the other Sorry Sorry Storybooks, um, the, the question of whether a language has an orthography or not. I remember um, Professor Soar had, had actually talked about that years ago and that there, there wasn't one. Uh. And, um, like for example, the I, speaking when we were working on Mello, like the Ibatans had created and orthography and that was a big deal when that came out and so many philippine languages are not mm. in that way and um chavacano has one but like so even that one when that book came out um in, you know it's there's no language is fluid right and um mm -hmm. the translator of, of that story um had consciously translated it for children and chavacano you know um, I think it has a little like the younger generations it's less Spanish so you know there's even variants in that I'm not sure everyone liked that translation either <laughs> mm. um, but this is sort of an issue that comes up once you start um, you know working with working with language and then working with languages that are working at the same time to be respected and established it's it's going to come up you know and um, the criticism can be a little scary but you still forge ahead because it's important um yeah hmm. yeah i remember you no know, um when i was in singapore i i went to uh to the to their national library i visited a expo uh like the everything that's written in jawi uh it's like arabic um arabic but in malay uh mm. their malay language is written in jawi and some of them i find the same um same with ours, like the the ones I've heard from my parents and even my aunties. And but but in the in Maranao, we before our Maranao language was written in Kirim. We call it Kirim. So, but in Arabic character. Oh. Oh. Unfortunately, you can rarely find ones now in um Lanosur. So. Yeah, I was like, even if like we can find one, maybe we can gather people who still have uh, working knowledge of uh the Maranao language. And yeah, of course with the with the with the happening of the Marawi siege, there were so many like uh books that was you know the, the that were lost, yeah, destroyed. Oh. So maybe right now uh it should also be a challenge to really gather again what's uh what we can still gather. I say, uh, right now I can see that the younger ones really uh have like 
can speak many languages, but they cannot speak their own language. Like mm-hmm. even even me, it's really challenging because now that I uh I like, I work in General Santos, so I have to speak in Visaya, or sometimes now I adopt Ilongo. Mm-hmm. And sometimes sometimes even at home we would we would speak Visaya with my sisters, and then suddenly we would ask, wait, why are you speaking Visaya? <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes mm-hmm. the, the parang the the sudden uh I know parang moment na oh we're, why are why are we speaking Bisaya and sometimes we speak also in English at home because of the the kids but sometimes we just oh you have to speak Maranao inside the household so that mm. they would somehow have an idea mm. <laughs> if well if it's gonna be a challenge for them to speak in fluent Maranao so at least they would have that um sense of uh belongingness by hearing um uh, Marano language. Mm. Oh, so in relation to that, Hannah, so is there a a very active uh, Maranao uh, literary circles that are trying to publish all different types of works in Maranao to really kind of preserve, not only preserve, but project the language out there? So it, it like you said, you don't have this um, difficulty because you're in different areas of the Philippines, then you begin to pick up those languages as opposed to where your home base was before, where the, you know, the literary uh, life is flourishing and, and so many stuff, you know, many literatures are being, I mean, you know, stories, books, what have you are, are being um, produced. Uh, right now in MECU in MECU Marawi, uh, they created uh, they created a separate office in the the uh, something cultural but focusing on uh, Maranao. But I think some of the efforts that they made is like they uh now um taken it to like records the like Maranao uh, writers uh like Maranao poems. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I know stories, yeah. But uh, I don't know. There's a lot to be done yet. Yeah. To yeah, for the Maranao language. Hana, um, you you're still practicing law, right? Hana, hello. Oh, she froze. She froze. Hopefully she comes back. There. Oh. oh, there she is. Hannah, this is Mila again. Uh, oh, your sound is off. Whose sound? Ha- Hannah's? Hannah's. But you are not on mute, so I don't know why. Yeah, no. Hmm. Just your volume, Hannah? Hello. Oh, oh there. there. Oh, there you go. Okay. So, Hannah, oh, yeah. <laughs> you couldn't hear us, but I was starting to yeah. say that... Um, I assume you're still practicing law, right? Yes. And, and you have a family of your own? No. <laughs> oh, nieces. You have nieces. I, I do. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, the, the reason I'm asking that is because um, how do you manage to find the time to to write and and um, and be involved in these other activities that you're you you've been mentioning? How how do you how do you find that time? Because it's such a great, um, uh, you know, you're writing and also being uh, an environmental activist and all that. So, I don't know. Um, I I try to find time, and I think it's a good thing that I'm working in a uh, university. So, I have some I some some groups here also invite me to speak uh, about the book or some of my advocacy. And I think it's a good thing to, I know, I think like when I tell other people that I really want to hold on to this because I was initially, I mean, I was first a literature major. So mm. oh, I really know. Okay. Yeah. So I feel like, you know, law, law legal profession is a uh, loads of, you know, work. Mm-hmm. And I feel like if I if I give give up on this, I don't know what's gonna happen to me. I think this is like my this is how 
somehow um an avenue for me to to relax yes yeah. yeah it's a uh, legal profession is a messy <laughs> <laughs> you, oh yes, we know that. So other people's <laughs> problem, <laughs> mm -hmm. and you feel like it. Sometimes I would say it all. It all boils down to like, oh, why do why don't they just talk? Why can't they just <laughs> compromise something like that? And <laughs> yeah, I feel like I feel like in the world of children's storybook or like in general in fiction, you can, you know, um, uh, you can you can you can create the story. You can mm -hmm. play with the characters. Right. Uh, yeah, and because because in legal profession, your own opinion does not matter. <laughs> it will not matter. <laughs> yeah. So, but in 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 this in literature, I mean in in fiction, it's mm -hmm. yeah, it's really the your creative mind that works. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. I have a question, Hannah. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi, thanks um, for this program. Thanks to Christina and Abe as well. But I was wondering if, um, I guess it's questions for Hannah uh, and Christina. Uh, did you encounter any um, challenges with translation, with trying to translate a word that's not very translatable or something that um, doesn't exist in um one culture or the other like um was anything like um untranslatable or hard to translate okay <laughs> yeah yeah actually when i was reading the translation so like um the letter g there's no letter g in maranao mm. so when we had to write the word jamaat that refers to jamaat refers to friday so when we had to when when the when I read the translation, we had to settle with letter D. That's and like uh also in Ranao, the names like Johara, Janine, like that, it's not present because letter J, there's no letter J in Ranao. So mm. we just have to put it in D. Yeah. So most most of my like cousins name Johara, we call them Duhara, like that. Mm. Yeah, so that's one of the, um, I don't know if it's, you can call it challenge, but yeah, sometimes mm -hmm. you have to, uh, like, what's going to be the translation of this, yeah. And also, the translation, actually, one of the cha uh, challenges is the the level of, um, the tr level of translation would, um, I was I was I was worried that the translation would not be understood by the Maranao young young Maranao readers. Mm. So I actually had my <laughs> parents uh, translated it and I felt like their translation was really difficult to understand for very young readers. Mm. So I uh, yeah so because they're really deep uh Maranao Mm. Mm. Yeah, and also this also uh one of the intrigue uh, uh well um thing in Maranao that there are words that are different um different from the other part of Lanao and the other part of uh Lanao, the other side of Lanao. Because sometimes my friends would mention a word and then they would say, What is that? And that's that's what they call it. So it's also different from the other side. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I, so I feel like right now the translation is understood. Naman so far by the readers, there's yet no questions. How did you make a decision if um there's two different words spoken by the different side of the lake? How how did you make a decision on which word to go with? Uh, so either way, either either can be used. But for the for the Jalal and the Lake, uh, I I trusted Professor Sir Haila Latif. I trusted uh her. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Welcome. Thank you. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I just wanted to throw in there for another story. <laughs> just sharing other sorry, sorry stories, but the Ivatan story that also came up. Um, uh -huh. I had a, there were a couple different translators that uh, had worked on it, and a friend um, who lives on the island of Itbayat had taken a pass, and she's very good friends with the person who had ended up translating it. And they looked at it and said, "This is Itbayatan, <laughs> not exactly Ivatan, but like I, I um, have no sense for any of those things being mm. very much." outside but yeah the place really you know it affects language just changes depending mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. um, yeah it's understood differently um, anyone have other questions oh, there, there's that. a question down on the bottom oh can you share the feedback and reactions you usually receive after reading to the kids, if there are any? Oh, Justine. Hannah's <laughs> frozen again. Oh, Hannah's frozen. Uh, she'll hopefully come back on. I can, um, oh, Start. you're back now? Here you go. Oh, and she's you're muted, Hannah. And then hello, just... can you hear me? You're back. Yeah, yeah, you're back. Oh, yeah, there. Sorry. Anyways. Yeah, they're they look happy and resolved after this. Oops. Frozen again. A uh, part where the strangers are now destroying the lake. They look so worried. Mm. But then they <laughs> can, yeah. and then uh yeah, and one thing, one thing, uh the uh one thing that's also funny, my one of my pamankin would say hi to people randomly, and then my other sister told him that you don't say hi to everyone, they're strangers. And they and the, my pamanke would say, They're not strangers, they're not wearing black, they're human. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, So my sister figured out that that was the influence of Jalal oh. and the League oh. to, to mm. him, yeah. So, yeah, and I think the recent uh, re uh story reading I did in Marawi, they were so they were so curious about the clouds. Yeah, mm -hmm. they also wanted it, <laughs> but then they were so got they they really got worried that that's gonna be the effect. And then one of the kids told me that he's never gonna ask for clouds. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, and I wish these kids would know where where Lake Lanao is. Uh -huh. Um, can I, I wanted to share, um, I'll share a picture, but I, I did a school visit recently in Long Beach in Southern California, and I read Jalal, um, and I showed them a picture, Hannah, of you with your pamankin, and okay. I'm just share this. Um, and then, so we came to Kitty Q&A, which is usually very, very short, because attention spans, you know. Um, so I showed them this. So this was at the very beginning. So this little boy raised his hand at the end of the story with his question. And he said, um, he said, there was a different word. And I was completely lost what he was talking about. And I was like, what word? And then he kept talking. And then another little boy said, the different word. And then I figured out they meant this picture at the very beginning. And they said, there was a different word. It wasn't lake. Oh, Rana. Yeah. And um, so that was a chance to, so they were really observant. They noticed the different title. Mm -hmm. And then I got to explain to 200 um, eight-year-olds <laughs> about um, different editions and said, oh, this is the American edition and you're seeing the Philippine edition and there's a different language on the cover. So, you know, kids do really pay oh. attention um, mm -hmm. and even Pretty to sure. that level. Yeah. I think Justine, you you have you you have their hand up. Yes, um, I was just going to comment um, after we had the the discussion about languages and the nuances and the complications, and I just wanted to commend you, Christina and Hannah, and and the work that we do with children's books. Mm. 
the level of detail and work that we put in what's so-called a children's book is so high mm. and and i i just want to put that out there because if you look at other children's books you would not find this you know translations and there's no like discussion about what is right and what is accurate and all the things that we do behind the scenes is so much more i think than what you know, not to not to say that those work that the other people are doing for their children's book is is less commendable or anything like that. But I just want to acknowledge that what we do, the books that we have, carries with it so much work that that I feel like we all should just, you know, love ourselves for for doing that. And the extent of collaboration that we do to get this book, these books out is also very extensive. And so our books are amazing, just, you know, for many reasons, but for that. So just thought I'd say that. You Justine, it's really beautiful. Yeah, I agree, I agree. It's a real labor of love. Anyone else have questions? I have a non-literary question for Hannah, but I can 100% hold that. <laughs> I was just going to ask, because um, I know you're a big um, coffee shop fan, Hannah, and we have sampled <laughs> coffee together. <laughs> what's your What's your favorite coffee shop? Let's say it went in the Philippines and then have you found a really amazing coffee shop on your travels abroad that you wanted to share? Oh. <laughs> I also have been like really eyeing a lot of Oakland coffee shops because we have a lot of good ones here. Oh. I have one in Davao. Um, the Purge, yeah. We went there last time. Purge coffee. Yeah. <laughs> Purge, yeah. And like recently I went to, to Bangkok. I had a coffee shop hopping. So I, I found this um Roots coffee shop and I tried their pour over coffee and it was really good. So the, the beads are from Chiang Mai, Thailand, and I really like it. <laughs> yeah. I want to go back there. <laughs> Unfortunately, I didn't buy the beans because I had limited luggage. I didn't want to carry because I stayed like um 11 days in Thailand. And I didn't want. I was. I was always. I'm, I'm as, as we are. <laughs> we are always worried about the luggage or kilo. So yeah, I didn't buy the beans. Maybe I. I have a reason to go back there. Oh yeah, I forgot to share because of that. Uh, event. Um, let me share. Just share this to you. Um, I met a Japanese uh friend. Uh, because I I went to Thailand for a sort of program in Pattaya and I met a Japanese and she's interested in translating the book in Japanese so I was like wow because she's also into language she's she's studying language yeah so she was like oh maybe we can do a project uh for your book and like she's interested to translate it in Japanese yeah so interested yes um project Yeah, that sounds, let's, let's definitely talk about that. That would be great. Yeah. Uh, Mila says she has to sign off. Bye, Mila. Thanks for coming. Any last questions, Abe? Like, I think maybe we're towards the end, unless anyone else has things they want to ask. Oh, you're on mute, Abe. No, I'm 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 pretty good. I think, boy, this was a great wide-ranging talk, and and got a chance to really understand some of the challenges that, um, you know, Hannah and folks like-minded ac eco activists and and face in terms of trying to preserve and uh, the uh, ecology and and the uh, the country, the lake, and all the other things. Logging. Oh my gosh, you know. It's, always the big challenges in the Philippines are all interrelated. <laughs>
I'll just drop in the chat one more time. Um, you know, if you want to follow, sorry, sorry, storybooks or Hannah, here's the links on um, Facebook and Instagram. And there's a wonder, I loved your interview with the reading Mara now, Hannah, by the way, I, I've listened to that a couple of times. It's, it's excellent. Um, if folks want to hear an in-depth conversation, um, between a Marano um, book book nerd and and Hannah, um, and then also if you'd like to purchase Jalal, uh, please purchase Jalal. There are links for the U.S. edition, and if you're based in the Philippines, order from Pumple Pie. So yeah, thank you so much, everyone, for spending yeah, time oh, with us. It's really good to see you. Yeah, and it's really nice to see you, Hannah. Wish we yeah. could go get coffee. <laughs> a bunch of uh, Yemeni cafes here in Oakland that have been trying. Yeah, soon. <laughs> thank you. And thank you, Abe. Yeah, no, thank you. Um, it was my pleasure and honor to host you both and bring this to our differing uh, groupings of folks who want to hear about your stories. Okay. So, um, and, uh, you know, we, for those that are still with us, uh, uh, please uh, join us in uh, mid-October for the 7th Filipino American International Book Festival here at the main library. So uh, more books to buy, more stories to hear and, and share. So yeah, join us uh, mid-October at the 12th and the 13th here at the main library. Okay, good night. Good night record. Okay, good night, everyone. Bye. Take care. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you.